Hi everyone, welcome to Micro Exposure. Today's video is special. It's a complete revision combining my earlier uploads dot into one long guide. If you're new here, this will save you time dot and if you've been watching from the start dot it's a good refresher. Let's begin with point three deadly microorganisms dot in our home and how to get rid of them. Today, we look at three common microorganisms that thrive in many Nigerian homes and how to get rid of them. One, mold, fungi. Mold grows in damp places like bathroom corners, under sinks, and even behind furniture pushed against the wall. It can trigger allergies, cause coughing, and affect breathing, especially for children and the elderly. Remedy, improve ventilation, clean with bleach or vinegar, and fix leaking pipes. 2. Escherichia coli, E. coli. This bacteria is often found in raw meat, unwashed vegetables, or dirty hands. It can lead to stomach cramps, diarrhea, or even kidney issues. Remedy, wash hands often, cook meat thoroughly, and disinfect chopping boards and surfaces. 3. Household yeast. They grow in leftover foods, old sponges, and moist kitchen towels. While not all are dangerous, some can cause skin irritations or worsen infections in people with weak immunity. Remedy, replace sponges regularly and sun-dry towels and napkins often. Keeping your environment clean isn't just about looks, it's a health defense. Don't forget to subscribe for more practical health tips right here on Micro Exposure. Many people believe that drinking dirty water is the only way you can get typhoid. But is that really true? Dot in this video, we'll uncover the real link between dirty water and typhoid fever. Dot how the bacteria spreads dot and what you can do to protect yourself and your family. Stay with me till the end because some of the facts might surprise you. The question is can dirty water give you typhoid or something worse? In Nigeria, we blame almost every fever on one word, typhoid. Dirty water, drinking Gary, or even eating outside, they say it causes it. But is it really typhoid? Or could it be something far more dangerous? What is typhoid? Typhoid fever is a serious illness caused by Salmonella typhi, a bacteria that spreads through contaminated food and water. It affects your digestive system, blood, and can become life-threatening if not treated early. How people get it? You can get it from Drinking untreated well or borehole water Eating food prepared with dirty water Poor hand hygiene after using the toilet Flies landing on your food or even sharing water sachets in public places. But here's the shocking part. Many people treat typhoid and malaria together without doing a test. But sometimes it's not typhoid at all. It could be a different bacteria infection or hepatitis A or staph, or even just food poisoning. Symptoms of real typhoid. Typhoid symptoms include prolonged fever, Weakness, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, rash or constipation. But these same symptoms can appear in other conditions too that's why testing is important. What you should do? Don't just swallow flagell or any drug the chemist recommends. No, I don't want to take that. Do a proper lab test. I'd rather get tested first. <sighs> Always treat based on results. Drink clean water only. Boil or treat water if you're unsure. Typhoid is real but so are many other diseases that mimic it. Don't self-diagnose. Don't assume. Get tested. The next video is Staphylococcus or Staph. As many call, it is one of the most. Misunderstood infections today, some people believe it causes dot almost every sickness, dot while others don't even know what it really is. In this video, We'll break down the facts about Staphylococcus to how it actually spreads, the symptoms to look out for dot and the right way to treat and prevent it. Stay tuned, because by the end, you'll know the truth behind the myths. What is staph infection? In Nigeria, when someone complains of itching, discharge, or strange rashes, you'll likely hear, it's staph. But what is staph really, and is it as common and dangerous as people say? Let's break it down. What is staph? Staph is short for Staphylococcus aureus, a type of bacteria that lives on your skin and inside your nose. 
Most of the time, it's harmless, but when it gets into your body through cuts, sores, or unclean hands, it can cause serious infections. How stuff spreads. Poor hand hygiene after using the toilet, unprotected sex, touching wounds without washing hands, dirty barber shop tools or sharp objects. Staff doesn't just come from the toilet. It spreads through everyday habits. What it can do to the body? Painful urination or discharge, chest or joint infections, in severe cases, blood poisoning, organ damage, or death. Stop guessing, start testing. Treating the wrong thing can lead to drug resistance and complications. How to protect yourself? Wash and sun dry your underwear, towels, and bed sheets. Avoid sharing personal items, cover cuts and wounds. Get tested before treating anything as stuff. In continuation, many people believe they got a toilet infection just by sitting on a dirty toilet seat. But here's the truth. What most people call toilet infection is not what you think it is. I end this video. We'll explain where the term really comes from. What's actually happening in the body, dot, and how to prevent and treat dot, the real infections behind the name, dot, be why the end. You'll see toilet infection in a whole new way. Julia, we hear it all the time. She has toilet infection. He got it from a public toilet. But what if I told you toilet infection is not a real medical diagnosis? Let's break the myth and expose the real diseases behind what people call toilet infection. The truth behind the term. The phrase toilet infection is common, but vague. Doctors don't use that term. Instead, the symptoms people blame on toilets usually come from specific infections like urinary tract infections, UTIs, bacterial vaginosis, BV, candidiasis, yeast infection, staphylococcus aureus, staph, or even sexually transmitted infections, STIs. How these infections really spread? Contrary to popular belief, most of these don't come from just sitting on a toilet seat. They come from poor personal hygiene, sharing unwashed towels or underwear, unprotected sex, using dirty hands to clean yourself, or wiping from back to front after using the toilet. The real symptoms you should pay attention to if you're experiencing vaginal or penile discharge, itching or burning sensations, pain when urinating, rashes, bumps, or boils, unusual smell or spotting. You may have an actual infection, but you need to get tested to know which one. Stop guessing, start testing. Don't let anyone sell you staff and toilet infection treatment from the bus park or roadside. Without a proper test, you could be treating the wrong thing and making it worse. How to protect yourself? Always wash hands properly after using the toilet. Don't share personal items like pants or towels. Wipe the right way. Use protection during sex. And get tested if you notice symptoms, don't self-medicate. The toilet is not the real problem, it's our habits, assumptions and silence. Moving on to hepatitis B, which is one of the most dangerous viral infections in the world today. But many people don't even know they have it until it causes serious damage. In this video, we'll break down what hepatitis B really is, how it spreads, dot the silent warning signs, dot and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your loved ones. Stay tuned, this might be one of the most important health topics you'll ever watch. Hepatitis B, the killer disease spreading silently in Nigeria. It's more silent than malaria. And millions of Nigerians are living with it without knowing. I'm talking about hepatitis B, the killer disease spreading silently in our communities. What is hepatitis B? Hepatitis B is a viral infection that attacks your liver. It spreads through blood, body fluids, and unclean medical or personal tools. It causes liver damage, liver cancer, and can even lead to death. How it spreads? Sharing shaving sticks, clippers, or needles, unprotected sex, blood transfusion from an infected person, childbirth, from mother to child, even sharing earrings or toothbrushes. Symptoms you should not ignore. Constant tiredness, yellowing of the eyes or skin, jaundice, pain in the upper right abdomen, dark urine, 
loss of appetite but these signs usually appear late, when the liver is already damaged. How to know if you have it? You can get tested in most hospitals and labs across Nigeria. Many don't test until it's too late. How to protect yourself? Get hepatitis B vaccine. Avoid sharing sharp objects. Always use protection during sex. Test your partner before sexual contact. Pregnant women should test early to protect their babies. But it's deadly and preventable. Get tested. Get vaccinated. This topic seems unassuming, but germs are everywhere on your tables, kitchen counters, dot, and even the things you touch every day. But buying disinfectants can be expensive, dot, and sometimes not even available when you need them. The good news is, you can make a simple disinfectant at home to, with ingredients you probably already have. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step. Are disinfectants too expensive in the market? Want to clean your home without breaking the bank? Today, I'll show you how to make a simple homemade disinfectant using just three ingredients you already have at home. You need 1 liter of clean water 2 tablespoons of bleach like JIK And if you have it, a few drops of essential oil for fragrance, like lemon or tea tree. You'll also need an empty spray bottle, a clean bowl, and something to stir with. Step 1. Pour your water into the bowl. Step 2. Add your 2 tablespoons of bleach. Step 3. Stir gently, don't shake hard. If you're using essential oil, add just 5 drops and stir again. Now use your funnel to pour the mix into your spray bottle. Label it clearly, disinfectant, keep away from children. You can now spray this on kitchen counters, bathroom surfaces, door handles, and tables. Let it sit for a few minutes, then wipe with a clean cloth. Never mix bleach with detergent or vinegar, it can release harmful fumes. Always store your disinfectant away from children's reach. And don't use this spray directly on food or skin. Clean doesn't have to be costly. With this homemade disinfectant, your home can stay safe and germ-free for lesser amount. Lastly, let me ask you these questions. Have you ever shared a towel, clothing, dot, or even a bed without thinking twice? What if I told you that simple act could be spreading infections that you didn't even know you had? Ringworm and other common skin infections dot often pass from person to person silently. Dot in this video, we'll uncover the hidden ways these infections spread, dot how to recognize them early, dot and what you can do to stop passing them on. Ringworm and other skin infections you're spreading without knowing. That itchy patch on your neck. That dry spot on your child's arm. It might not be eczema. It could be ringworm, and yes, you might be spreading it without knowing. What is ringworm? Ringworm isn't caused by a worm. It's a fungal infection that affects the skin, scalp, or nails. It shows up as a circular rash, red around the edges and clear in the middle. But it's not just about appearance. It spreads quietly through surfaces and habits. How it spreads, uncommon ways. Forget towels and sponges. Let's talk about the places you don't think about. Shared prayer mats and gym mats. And church carpets where people kneel or lie down barefoot. Unwashed pillowcases and bedsheets. These allow ringworm spores to hide in fabric for days. School uniforms or baby wrappers passed from child to child without proper washing. Contact with pets, especially cats and dogs with bald spots or flaky skin. Shared baby toys, walkers, or changing mats in creche or daycare. Fungi thrive in warm, moist places and they don't need direct skin contact to spread. Other skin infections. It's not just ringworm. You could be spreading. Tinea capitis, scalp infection in kids. Fungal nail infections. Athletes foot from wet slippers or sandals. Yeast infections from shed or sweaty surfaces. Symptoms to watch for. Watch for itchy or flaky skin patches, ring-shaped rash on arms, legs, or neck, hair loss in patches, especially in children, nail thickening, cracking, or discoloration. Prevention. How to avoid spreading it. Wash pillowcases and bedsheets weekly. Avoid lying directly on public carpets or mats. Check pets for bald patches or flaky skin. Disinfect baby toys and changing mats regularly. 
always treat skin conditions with proper antifungal meds and not random cream mixtures. These infections may look harmless, but they spread faster than you think. Keep your home clean, your fabric fresh, and your habits sharp.